to see how men can invade from far away from a chain. thirsty and a little water I ask for whiskey and and water I heard you that'll be 25 cents sir I haven't even drunk yet it's the first time you treat me this way well I'll tell you that's the way we treat folks that we don't know so get out because we don't want you around here all right I'm going but first I want to talk to Peggy what more do you want from her get out Peggy's got another man. I want her to tell me. <laughs> I said, get out of here! <laughs> Sam, what happened? Who did it? It was me, Peggy. Sorry. But I didn't know it was a custom in your place to throw out folks who ask for a whiskey. Well, I'm sorry. Perhaps Sam exaggerated. Tom, would you please bring me a bottle? No, Sam knows what he's doing. It's obvious I'm not wanted here. No, wait a minute. Can't I offer you a drink? Aren't you afraid of compromising yourself? Here's to your new life, Peggy. Oh, Will, what do you mean? I had a lot of time to think in prison. But one thing was on my mind. Women can't stay alone long. You're mistaken, Will. I've always been alone since you left. What Sam told me is a bit different. I couldn't expect you to be faithful to a killer. Sam was lying to you. I've been absolutely faithful to the only man I loved. What made you commit a crime that was so horrible? Peggy, you too. But if you'd only come once to the prison. It wasn't a very easy thing for me. To be known as the woman of an assassin, you understand? I was so afraid.
Everything is great, Tiny. Almost all the men are at the mine. Those who are left are at the saloon listening to somebody singing. <laughs> You'd think it was Christmas Eve. <laughs> Good. That way we can work without interference. <laughs> Let's go. I was told that you had confessed, that all the proof and the testimony was dead set against you. So I accepted fate and tried to forget about you. But I haven't succeeded. I can't stay very long. I've escaped from jail and there's a reward of $2,000 on my head. But before I go, isn't there somewhere we can go and talk? Back there. I'm sure it's safer. I tell you that that's Will Flaherty. I recognize him. That's impossible. Will Flaherty's in prison at Bisbee. Then he's escaped, I guess. Maybe he's in a hurry to enjoy his $30,000. Don't you recall? He robbed the bank at Bisbee and killed two men. When they caught him, there was no sign of the booty. I guess he's got it all hidden someplace. But what can we do? Hmm. Not a thing. He shoots too straight. Better just keep an eye on him till the sheriff arrives. <laughs> Well, it's your turn, Doc. Hmm?
<laughs> You've come for your share of the booty, haven't you, Zeke? That's right, Chief. Boy, you deserve it. Here's your share. The safe's empty. Not even a dime, you fool, much less the damn gold. Is that the information you've got for me? Listen to me, Tiny. The information was correct. The gold must have already left the mine, but it hasn't reached the bank yet. I told you, didn't I? It was better to wait a couple of days more. It's a long way, and the stagecoach could have had an accident. Well, now, maybe Zeke's right, Tiny. <sighs> but it's useless to waste our time now. We're all in danger of being trapped. What do we do now, Chief? What makes you think the stagecoach will stop here? It has to, I tell you. There isn't another bank in the whole territory. And the stagecoaches are forced to stop. Damn it. It's just our luck that there are two different roads which lead to this miserable town, and there's no way of knowing which one they're going to take. And that's going to mean we have to split into two groups, you hear? Doc, you better take six men and go cover the north road about six miles down. No, no. Well, I... Mm-mm. What is it, Doc? Doesn't the idea suit you? I think that you'd be better off if you'd only use your head. Tomorrow, 8 o'clock in the morning at the very latest, someone's going to come in here and find the safe in that condition. What do you suppose they'll think? That it was done by the squirrels, huh? Oh, no, ma'am. They'll begin to really think that something is wrong. They're going to start telegraphing all over. And being that the stagecoach doesn't travel at night and has come to a halt somewhere, they're going to change the route. Then, it's obvious they'll begin hunting all of us down. And you know it. Then you propose that we forget this business, do you? No. That idea didn't enter my mind. I have a plan that is simple and sure. I heard the shots and ran to see what happened. I found the bodies there of two men. Then the sheriff and his men arrived and I got away without being seen. That night they came and got me at the hotel and started questioning me. But why didn't they listen to you, Will? There was a professional gambler by the name of Luke Brabham. Paid to swear he'd seen me come out with a gun and a sack in my hand. I couldn't support my alibi, and the result was they condemned me. Someone paid for that false testimony. And that someone is a real killer. There's only one way of getting him, and that's find Luke Brabham. Will, does that mean you're going to go away? You don't want me to spend the rest of my life on the run, do you? Don't ever forget you're the woman of Will Flaherty. Everybody back up against the bar. Anyone who dares to move will be shot down like a dog. <laughs> band of outlaws. Seems like they're gonna rob the miners. There's dozens of them. No, don't go, Will. If you hide yourself, you'll be able to do something to help us. You've got to hide. All right. Go up to my room. I'll see to it that they don't come up. This way. What are you doing here? I want you to get out of here. Come on, baby. That's no way to treat distinguished guests now, is it? Let me go. Let it go. You are the owner, I reckon. Yes, I am, and I'd like to know what you mean by all this. Sure, why not? I think you have every right to know. <laughs> well, ma'am, you see, my friends and I have decided to spend a few days in your pleasant town, a sort of vacation. But seeing as how we don't like any publicity, for the whole time we're here, no one in here, no inhabitant of little Tucson, will be allowed to absent himself. Four of my men have got orders to stand guards on the roofs of the houses. Anyone who attempts to escape gets plugged. <laughs> Naturally, we're going to requisition all the horses. So you see, all you have to do is stay quiet and just mind your own business. As for you, ma'am, since we think it's a nice saloon here, we're moving in for a little while. Paying you for the pleasure. <laughs> we can't just stand here. You're crazy. They'll shoot us all down. What's going on? Is something wrong? <laughs> Don't worry. Let me settle a question for you. What'll it be? Heads or tails? Now, then. Is it heads or tails? 
Heads. That's the way. Look, it's heads, see? You won the bet, mister. I want to reward you. <laughs> Where'd the stranger go? Upstairs in my room. What are you, mad? How do you know he wasn't sent here by the bandits to spy on us? What have you got to mutter about, huh? If you've got the thing to say, speak out loud, you hear? Otherwise, shut your mouth. No! No, Tom! Murderers! Murderers! You've killed my brother! He's only wounded. I'm sorry, lady, but he deserved it. Old Luke doesn't like folks to be played All tricks. right, Becky, let me take a look at him. <clears throat> Nothing serious. Oh. Can we take him upstairs? Go up with him and take a look, boys. There might be some weapons hidden there. Everybody out. All of you. Get out. And mind your own business. I know tricks. I'll go get the bandages. something to remove the bullet. A pair of scissors will do it. Come on, King. How about a look around? Hurry up, Doctor, so you can get out of here. The Chief objects to having anybody around. Let's go. I reckon it's gonna hurt a bit, Tom. But it has to be done. Peggy, you give me a hand and hold him still. <laughs> He's crying like a baby. <laughs> go take a look. You're gonna be all right, son. I'll guarantee you'll be good as new in a week. <laughs> oh, thank you, Doctor. But what do you think they're really after? I don't know, Peggy, but whatever it is, we can't do anything about it. It'll be worse for all of us. And now let's go so your brother can sleep. All he needs is a bit of rest. Good night, Doctor. And thank you again. Not at all. Good night. Good night, Doctor. And thanks again. You pig. <laughs> <laughs> 
It'll be dawn soon, and things will be twice as difficult. I've got to try it. But they'll see you, Will, because we're completely surrounded. It's the only chance we've got. Even if I could get to the nearest town, the people there would shoot me first before I could speak. But with the telegraph, it'll be different, as they won't know who's transmitting. There's something else, Will. What? But I don't know if I should be telling you or not. What's it about? The one that you're looking for, Luke. I think he's here with the bandits. What makes you think it's him? It's the one who shot Tom. The chief called him Luke. He's tall, and he has a dark beard. Uh-huh. Who is it? Don't be frightened, ma'am. It's tiny. Just a minute. What do you want? It's very pleasant here. Uh, it has the real touch of a woman. Uh, Peggy, I come up to have a drink with you. All right? Aren't many interesting folks in this place to have an interesting talk with? There's nothing that I want to say to you. <laughs> in my opinion, you're completely wasted in this town. And, uh... I wonder what makes you want to remain here at all. Peggy, wouldn't you be interested in running a saloon in a big city in the East, huh? I'm not interested. I'm all right here. <laughs> a flower of the desert which will wither before man is able to enjoy its perfume. Don't talk nonsense and get out of here if that's all you have to say to me. Stop this hypocrisy playing the innocent victim of violence. Your reputation will not be compromised. <laughs> 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 sure, I'd forgotten about the slapping bit that's needed to ease your conscience. That stuff's all over with now. Peggy, come on. No, let me go. No, no, let me go. No, oh, no, oh. no. <laughs> Shoot, kid. I want him alive. Go after him. Where are you going, you idiots? He escaped from here. Go and look over there. And you this way. And I want you to search every house one by one. Hey, you! If you see him, aim at his legs. There's nobody here, come on. He's got to be here somewhere, Ziki. Doc, he got Pablo. 
He must have taken his clothes. But I saw Pablo two minutes ago. He ran that way. Come on, come with me. No, you go back to the saloon. Come on. doing? Don't you recognize him? It's Will Flaherty. And he's got $30,000 hidden away somewhere tiny. I'm not interested in whether he dies. I'm only interested in where he's got that money hidden. And I'll bet he's going to tell us. Chief, Luke has just spotted three men heading straight for the village. He says it looks like the sheriff and two of his deputies. Doc, you'll bring this one to the stable of the saloon, all tied up and gagged. You get inside the bank and don't begin shooting until I do. And get all the townsfolk in the church and keep them quiet. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. That's enough! <laughs> ah. be Don't move, you hear? Take your hat off! Sure, kind of strange. There's not even a dog around. I heard it said a sleeping man can't sin if that old proverb is true. I guess the people of this town are just all little angels. It's funny, though. Old Lemmy's usually got his store open by this time. Yeah, and the widow Kellogg is usually delivering her groceries now. This all don't look right to me. Get rid of the body. You've really done it big this time, Chief. Send the men back on the roofs. The stagecoach might arrive at any moment. Nice to run into you. Well, now, aren't you lucky? What a coincidence. You had ideas about what you're going to do to me. Well, now, listen here, I've got a couple of ideas, too. You want me to tell you? I have an idea that after this, you won't go around blabbing to everyone that Luke Brabham's a big liar. Stop that, Luke! What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? This man's a gold mine alive and you were going to kill him. I caught him trying to untie himself, Doctor. I thought we'd already had enough trouble. 
You can take care of him afterwards. Right now, we want him to talk. We want him to tell us about where all that money is. <laughs> Maybe I'll let you off with your life, huh? And make you cross over the border. <laughs> but first, you gotta tell us where the money is. You're gonna tell us where you put that money away, otherwise it's gonna be too bad. Spit it out! I have no idea what you're talking about. You're Will Flaherty. You robbed the bank at Bisbee and killed two of the employees. You're wrong. I didn't kill anybody. And I never robbed a bank. Sure. It'll turn out that it was I who did it, huh? That's enough for wasting time. Come on, kid. <laughs> <laughs> How about it? Do you think you're ready to talk? You hit him too hard, you stupid idiot. He's fainted. Let's give him time to think. I'm sure when he comes to, he'll be more reasonable. Okay, he's got till the stagecoach gets here. Stay at the door and keep watch, and don't let anyone near him. Should've got rid of him. What the hell are you up to anyway, Tiny? You know damn well he can't tell us where that money is. I know that, you fool, but the others don't, and they mustn't find it out. Seems you've forgotten that the idea was to split the dough with all the gang. Do you think if Doc and the boys found out what had happened, they'd come around to thank me? <laughs> we should've got rid of Will before Doc was able to recognize him. Now it's too late. But what'll happen to Flair to gets away? You're covered, but... He'd come after me in hell if it was necessary. Well, you got your part of the loot, didn't you? I was the one who risked my skin doing it all, while all you did was swear before the judge, so don't tell me your conscience bothers you. Take it easy. Flaherty is never gonna get out alive. When Doc goes back there again to make him talk, all he's gonna find is a cadaver. That's it. The stagecoach with the gold. We've got to get word to the men. Everyone to his place. The village folk are all gathered in the church. And the pastor is delivering his sermon now. Come on. you move. You'll be dead if you don't stop that shouting and throw down that gun. Get down and hurry. You can put them in the church with the others and be quick about it. What do you mean in church? Come on, Let's go on. on. I'm a free thinker. It'll Come do on. you good to do some praying for your sinful soul. Be careful. There might be somebody in there. What is this? Some gold. You're gonna be nothing but a lot of nuisance. Come on, get out! <gasps> what kind of a welcome is this? Let me go! Let me go. I've never what? seen anything like it. What do you think you're doing? Let's get it straight. I'm asking the questions. Who are you? My name is Horace Pym, impresario and choreographer. Shut your mouth. Nobody asked you anything. This is the ballet of the Judith girls. 
And I am Judith in person. And this gentleman, who you treated so badly, is our impresario, Mr. Pym. We're on our way to Dodge City to put on a show. And we haven't the least intention of stopping over even for a minute here in this abandoned village. That's just what you're going to do. You're going to stop over in this abandoned village. Come on over to the saloon and behave yourselves. Otherwise, there's going to be trouble. Monsieur, I won't have you mistreat my girls. My ballerinas have been applauded in Kansas City, in Abilene, in New Orleans. And in the little two sign, you're going to lay an egg if you don't quit whining. Now get in there with the girls. You hear? Judith, Judith. <laughs> You have no manners. <laughs> You're a pretty little wench. This is simply intolerable. I'm not going to stand for it. Believe me, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Mr. Pym, forget it. It's obvious this is the first time you've been around here. And you'd better learn how things are done out in the West. Uh, would you mind telling us exactly what your intentions are, my dear you sir? You can drop that my dear sir stuff and start listening. For reasons I won't explain, we are compelled to detain you here for a couple of days, see? But nobody's going to touch a hair on your heads unless you start getting wild ideas. I ought to warn you, somebody's already tried it, but he didn't get very far. And you watch out. No funny stuff with the girls. Uh, excuse me, sir. Tiny. My name is Tiny. Very well, Mr. Tiny. Since we're compelled to stay here anyhow, don't you think we might organize a performance for the town? Our ballet is high class, but owing to the unusual circumstances. Are you mad, Judith? How can we stoop that low? Do you mind shutting up just for once, Mr. Pym? Why not, Chief? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with organizing a little party. If nothing else, we'd be spotting that half a man. <laughs> Isn't that right, ma'am? Why not? But we'll have to ask the madam of the house if she agrees to it. What do you say, Peggy? Why are you asking? Ever since you arrived here, you've been doing exactly what you want. about to kill me when the others arrived. For some reason, he can't spill the beans. So he's going to try again to kill me. But you're in danger here. They might come back any minute. Don't worry about me, because I'm going to be all right now, Will. Ever since those girls have arrived, those outlaws are leaving me alone. What girls? I heard voices. Who are they? Some dancers. The band is forced to stop here. Tonight, they're giving a party. It might be a good chance to escape. Yes, I thought about that, too. Will, tonight I'll wait until they're all busy watching the show. Then I'll be right over and set you free. If they ever know you help me, they'll show no pity. You know that. They'll never know. Come close, Peggy. Closer. How long you been here, Ziki? A lifetime, Chief. How about selling somebody else? Sure, I'll replace you. Thanks. Be seeing you.
<laughs> That's a good one. The village idiot. And to think folks around here didn't think much of him. It remains to be seen where he got the horse. Don't anyone touch him. Let him stay there so he'll be an example to the others. Peggy, do you realize the risk you're taking? These people don't waste words. They just kill. Uh, you're seeing that for yourself. And all this for a man we don't even know, only that he spent three years in a jail. He's nothing but a common criminal. A criminal who could quite easily have remained in hiding. Instead, he was willing to risk his life so he could do something for us. We could do with more criminals like that in Little Tucson. Not so loud, Peggy, or they might hear you. If you knew Will as well as I had known him, before that awful day at Bisbee, you wouldn't talk that way. Peggy, you know I've always had faith in you, and I've always done whatever you wanted me to. But this time, I can't go along with you. Very well, Tom. I can't force you to. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Come on, get them higher. They're not going to break. Listen here, Kitty. You think you're any better than the others? Come on and practice. How can anyone practice? I'm afraid. But there's nothing to be afraid about. We've got a job to do, and the bandits are paying us. So what are you worrying for? Besides, they're less bandit than a certain conceited impresario, besides which they're lots better looking. Girls, there's something I want to say to you since they aren't around here now. You can speak to me, madam. Excuse me, I'm Monsieur Pym, impresario and choreographer. I assure you, you will get full consideration. Well, I'm sorry I haven't come to offer you a contract, but there is a chance for you all to earn a few dollars. and you were winking at him. Come on, tell us who you were winking at. At me, huh? Guess which one? Hands off, you old filthy thing. If I were you, I wouldn't have anything to do with him. He's a dirty good for nothing. But you can trust me completely like I was your own father, my dear.
can I go and see? Go on, you can beat it. I can do without your brilliant conversation. Believe me, I am an expert. You're the swellest girl I've ever seen around here. You're pretty swell yourself, but you'd be much nicer uh. if you'd only stop stroking my knees under the table. What are you trying to do? Cheat me right under my nose? Huh? Take your hands off me. Well, Tiny, what did you think? Did you like my number? They get on my nerves a bit, these dances. You have to think out the most interesting parts for yourself. I'm sure your thinking goes that far. What about having a nice quiet drink up in my room, huh? Why not? All women are the same. You're just as good as any. Let's go. You see that? While we argue, the chief's taking her upstairs. Well, what's going on? I won, didn't I? You may have won, but she prefers me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you who she prefers. <laughs> You stupid idiot, let's have a little quiet. You filthy pig, that'll teach you how to treat a lady. <laughs> how dare you! to do it alone, could I? Come on, let's go. Go on in, I'll stay out here. All right. How did you manage it? Tommy helped me. Everything's fine, but we must hurry up to take advantage of this confusion. But when they find out, they're sure to suspect you. No, don't worry. They all think that I'm in my brother's room. Come on, there's no time to lose. Come on, Peggy, we better go. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's enough, you idiots. The first man who doesn't obey me is going to get a bullet in his gut. Have you all gone crazy? You're nothing but a bunch of stupid idiots, that's what you are. And you trollops, get up to your rooms and don't let me see your faces again. Go on, and make it quick. And you, Pablo, aren't you supposed to be on guard outside? Yes, but Luke said I could. I'm the one who gives the orders around here. Now listen to me. <laughs> set foot in here. No more mixing and drinking with the others, and I better not see any of you townsfolk coming out of that church. Is that clear? Fire! The town's on fire! A fire? What's going on? Are you crazy? There's enough dynamite in there to blow up half the town. Hey, you up there! The hell with Come you on down! Dynamite. There's dynamite! Hey, killer. Escaping! Doc, take a few men and try to put out the fire. Joe, Pablo, go and get a couple of horses and go after them. I want you to bring them back dead or alive. If you don't, you might just as well not come back here at all. Go on. Luke! Where's Luke? The last time I saw him, he was out there standing guard. Better look inside. Be just our luck that bandit knocked him off. Get going.
didn't see me again so soon, Luke, did you? We'll be together. Luke, grab him. Till you talk. I don't know anything. Here we are, Luke. I've waited three years for this moment. This time, I'm not a prisoner. There's no magistrate to listen to your lies. Who paid you to be a witness at my trial? Hurry up, Luke. I got no time to waste. Who paid you? Got nothing to say. I won't tell you anything. All right, Luke. All right. Well, you won't tell anyone anything ever again, you hear? What are you going to do? You wouldn't do that to me. Will. Yeah? And what makes you think I wouldn't do it? Pull those reins. You can't do it. It's no sin to throttle a poisonous snake like you. Ha! No, no, it would get you nowhere. I'll talk. I'll tell you. It was Tiny paid me. That day we were at Bisbee, and we all drew lots, and the choice happened to fall on Tiny to go and rob the bank. But he didn't want to divide the money, so he paid me to say I'd seen you do the job yourself. He gave me $500, and another 500 I was given as a reward for having helped in the capture of the thief. You didn't get much of a price for doing it, did you? They paid you very little for my life, you snake. <laughs> now then. I don't like the looks of this business, Tiny. I'm beginning to think that that gold never existed. Don't talk nonsense. It's only a question of hours, of minutes, maybe. Yes, a question of hours before the forces of the law arrive. Doesn't the fact that Will took Luke with him mean anything to you? What is it you mean? If he meant to cross over into Mexico, he wouldn't have taken Luke with him. I'm beginning to think that this here Flaherty had nothing to do with a robbery. And I have an idea that Luke gave false evidence. What do you think? Makes things interesting. Look, Doc, I'm not interested in your ideas. I'm only interested in getting my hands on that gold and heading for the border as fast as I can. The ground here is beginning to scorch my feet. Oh, I agree, Tiny. We can't waste any time. Doc, do you mean we should give everything up and slink away with empty hands? Oh, no. We could strip down all the townspeople. I always said you were nothing but a bunch of chicken thieves. I'm not messing my hands for so little. Listen, you can behave like this with all the others, Tiny. Not with me. Now you watch out. I could go and tell my interesting ideas to the men and they might take them seriously. All right, Doctor. And what do you propose? Let's wait another couple of hours until noon at the very latest, and then beat it. All right. I want all the men in the saloon. We'll put your proposal to a vote. Good. <laughs> Would you mind not walking up and down, ma'am? You're getting me dizzy. Come on down, King. We're having a meeting in the saloon. You just better not get any ideas in your pretty head while I'm away, get it? You don't think they'll want to take us with them? Oh, they certainly won't take you away. Relax, girls. We mustn't lose our heads. Let's see if they go away. And if they want to take us with them, they'll first have to deal with me. I've been wanting to tell you something, but that animal was always around the place. You know, I'm sorry I accepted this. 
Now I know the girls and I would have been willing to help even without taking the money. Thanks, Judith. And thanks to all the rest of you. Ziggy. King. Sam. Bill. Kid. I'm surprised none of them got any guts. <laughs> Ramon. Tiny, you got to understand. I got a wife and kids and I want to go to Mexico. Swine. Well, well. You're six against four, so I guess we'll all follow Doc's plan. Perfect. We can wait until noon and then get out. Get to your posts! Every one of you! I want no surprise at the last moment. I want everybody to keep their eyes wide open, you hear? If you want to get to Mexico. last week from Bisbee Jail. He's mad. What's he doing around here? Listen, boys, I'm clearing out. Yeah, me too. that card, Will, and come forward with your hands up. Unbuckle your holster with the left and drop it to the ground. Aren't you my friend, Pat? Killers have never been friends of mine, and you know it. I'm not a murderer. You've heard all the testimony, except mine. You've listened to everyone but Will Flaherty, because Will Flaherty is a maggoty pig. Haven't you ever heard of paid witnesses and bribed judges? What chance could I have had at my trial? No alibi, no important friends, only my life and reputation. All I know is the sentence pronounced by the court of Bisbee. Will, I got to arrest you. All right, Pat. You can arrest me, but first let me have my say. Look, how about it? You've got a gun, so don't worry. I've brought you somebody who can tell you much more about the Bisbee job than I can. Come and have a look. My buddy just can't walk very well right now. Look here, Will. Nobody's going to be able to say that I didn't give you every chance. Why don't you relax, Chief? You've still got half an hour. You've no idea how a lot of things can happen in half an hour. <laughs> I recall that once in Dallas... Keep your mouth shut. I've had enough of your damn stories. <laughs> Let's go. See anything? 
Not a thing. Charlie, kid, go saddle the best horses and lead them inside. Before leaving here, we'll kill all the rest of them. Okay, Chief. Come on now, everything's gonna be all right. <laughs> Judith, it's my duty at this moment to make a confession. I have a wife and five children. I left them to follow you. I hope you forgive me, my dear. Of course I do. What time is it by this damn little gadget? It is exactly nine minutes to twelve o'clock. What do you want? Just wanted to tell you that we're leaving and you're coming with me. You better get ready. If I'm not mistaken, that's going to disappoint a certain someone who might be capable going after you, even to Mexico. And I'd like nothing better because I've got some unfinished business to settle with him. But he doesn't even know who I am. He wouldn't dream of coming to look for me in Mexico. You underrate him. He's extremely generous. Come on. I've no time to waste. Peggy, get all your things together no, and don't keep me waiting. What more do you want? Why don't Judith. you get out of here, you dirty I'll rat? I'll show you. Oh. Stop it. That's no way to treat a woman. Shame on you. No. Shame on you. No. Let me go. No. Let me go, you rough. <laughs> Let's go. What are you going to do with that girl? You're not thinking of bringing her along. She could be useful. Yes, so they can catch us more quickly. Doc, don't you speak that way to me. And don't you tell me what I must do or what I must say. Get it into your stupid head once and for all that I'm the chief here. You're nothing but a fool. It's coming, chief. It's a stagecoach with the gold. It's about two miles from here. <laughs> well, well. Then I guess we still have a few minutes to prepare ourselves. Now go on back to your places. I don't trust you. You're coming along with me. We'll continue this conversation later. Hmm. church with all the others. Come on, get going.
Stay where you are. Use up his ammunition. Right. Well, well, Flaherty, listen to me. I've got your girl with me, and I'm going to put her in front of the point of my pistol. So you better listen carefully. Because she's going to come out first, and if you don't want me to kill her, nobody move. If one of you even touches this gun before I get out of this town, I'm shooting her. And you can depend on it. I'll leave her half a mile down the road. Do you hear me? All right, Tanny. We're going to leave it up to you. Step down, all of you, and stand right in the center of the road, far away from the coach. And I want you to drop your guns on the ground. Is that understood? We understand. Come on, boys, you heard, didn't you? Get out. It's much too dangerous. Flaherty. Now come on out or you'll be sorry. But he didn't believe the many things. But he didn't hear what people say.
What are you going to have, sir? Whiskey double, Sam. Got anything to pay with? She would come back to him. Bet you it's the first time that a man got a reward for his own head. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to little Tucson, Will Flaherty. Thank you.